Hello, my friends. Welcome to Pack Valiant and Season 3 of the Bible of the Line series. A series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. Earlier this year, I said I wasn't going to do I Belong to Life Season 3 this year, but I changed my mind. This is Episode 0, which may seem weird because I usually start with Episode 1. I will get to that later, but for now, let's fire it on up and dive right in. I don't know that I've ever felt dumber. I guess he does a big dumb thing here. Part of the reason this is episode zero is that I am a programmer, and most programming languages start indices with zero. Scratch and Snap start with one, but Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, C, C Sharp, C++, and most other languages start indices with zero. An index is a number that specifies a location of something within something else, like a value in an array or a character in a string. I will use JavaScript because that is the easiest to understand. I will create a variable called ARR, short for array, and assign to it an array. Arrays, streams, and other objects are stored somewhere in memory, and they have references, which are numbers specifying where in memory they are stored. Here is what is happening. A variable called ARR is created, an array is created, and a reference to the array is stored in the ARR variable. The beginning of the array is the first value, and the index is how many values forward to go. Index 0 means go forward 0, so we are still at the first value. Index 1 means go forward 1, so we would be at the second value. My friends, and welcome back to another episode of the. Wait, why is Dave over there? And what happened to his sunglasses? Was he pushed over by something? JavaScript arrays are more flexible than Java arrays. Java arrays have a fixed length, which means you cannot add or remove values. You can change values, but all the values are of the same type. JavaScript arrays can have values added or removed, and the values can be, but don't have to be, of the same type. You can even put an array in itself. The push method of an array adds a value to the array. I am pushing a new value onto the end of the array.
I have a reference to an array in the ARR variable. So ARR.push ARR pushes a reference to itself onto itself. I can log the array to the console. As you can see in the console, there is an array, specifically the one I stored in the ARR variable. There is one value in the array, which means the value is at index zero. And what is that one value? It is an array, specifically the same array, which means it has one value. And what is that one value? It is, yet again, the same array because it is at index zero of the same array. I can put brackets at the end of an array and an index between the brackets to access a value in the array. At index zero, it is the same array, so I can, again, put zero between brackets after that to access the same array again. I could put as many of these zero between brackets as I want to, and it will be the same array every time because the array contains itself at index zero. Troll series, the series where we are continually showing it can be a lot of fun to look like an idiot. The level that's going to be making me look like an idiot today is called You Just Got Troll Leveled. Similarly, I can create an object and assign a reference to itself and a property. I will create a variable called obj, short for object and assign to it an object. Here's what is happening. Just like with the array, a variable called obj is created, an object is created, and a reference to the object is stored in the obj variable. I can call the property whatever and assign to the object whatever property a reference to itself which I have in the obj variable I can log the object to the console And as you can see, there is a whatever property. And what is the whatever property's value? It is an object, specifically the same object, which means it has a whatever property. And what is the whatever property's value? It is, yet again, the same object because it is at whatever property of the same object. I can put a dot at the end of an object and a name after the dot to access a value in an object. At property whatever, it is the same object. So I can again put dot whatever 
after that to access the same object again. I can put as many of these dots, whatever, as I want to, and it will be the same object every time because the object contains itself at property whatever. XD made by Abitin. Now you might be thinking, why am I on the right side? I don't really know. Abitin requested me to be on the right side of the level. So that's where we're at. You might be wondering why my sunglasses look the way they are. To get that answer, you're gonna have to come to a Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash DJ underscore Dave, hit that. This is kind of like recursion, which is when a function calls itself. A good example of recursion is the factorial of a positive integer. I will demonstrate. I will create a function called factorial. It will take in a number. We need a base case, which is a particular input condition that the function can calculate with without calling itself. So that the function doesn't keep calling itself indefinitely and overflow the call stack. Whenever a function is called, it is added to the call stack. And when a function returns, it is removed from the call stack and the previous function resumes. One factorial is one, so I will make the base case less than two and it will return one. The factorial of a positive integer is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to it. Five factorial is, uh, is five times four times three times two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. So can you see that five factorial is five times four factorial? Five times the number is four to one multiplied together is the number is five to one multiplied together. That is where the recursion comes in. Let's follow five factorial in this function. Five times factorial 
of 4, which is 4 times factorial of 3, which is 3 times factorial of 2, which is 2 times factorial of 1, which we defined in the base case as 1. Going backward, 1 is returned, then 2 times 1 is returned, then 3 times 2 times 1 is returned, then 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is returned, then 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is returned. follow button let's go ahead and start up the troll level it's just a lot is happening at the bottom left no that's cool i can shrink my webcam if you think shrinking my hi a function really is an executable object with the name of a function which internally is a variable with the same name as the function being assigned a reference to the function object I can put parentheses after it, or after any reference to a function, to call the function. I can access the function without calling it by accessing it without putting parentheses after it. I can make the function refer to itself like I did earlier by defining a property and assigning to the property a reference to itself, which I have in the factorial variable. An array is also an object with values at consecutive indices being consecutive to each other in memory. There are actually two ways to access properties. The first is with a dot with the name of the property after it, which can only be any permutation of lowercase letters, uppercase letters, dollar signs, underscores, and digits 0 to 9, but a digit 0 to 9 cannot be first. The second is with brackets, just as I have shown with arrays. The value between the brackets is converted to a string representing the name of the property, and it can contain any characters, not being limited, like the dot. Between the brackets, I can put any expression, and the resulting value is converted to a string. I can concatenate, meaning join, two strings together. So this is another way to access the whatever property. Because with this way, I can use any string of characters I want, I can use spaces, apostrophes, and bangs, and I can create a property called April Fools. This is the reason that this is episode zero. 
This is kind of backward from last year, where I made you think I wasn't doing season 2, but I did season 2. And now you thought I was doing season 3, but I'm really not doing season 3 this season. In fact, I have already watched this trolled episode. If you are smart, click the like button, and if you are a genius, click the subscribe button. And you will take care of me next time. And until then, see me. I'm really not much of a sports fan, but... If you look all around my room, oh, speaking of sports fan, right up there, baseball fan. I look at the wall. Sport. I used to have a American football thing. I'm not sure where that is now. And that clock, which is broken. My trash can and my rug. And boom, boom, boom. And look, closet knobs. Speaking of broken, this is broken. Oh, there is a quirk with my baseball light. A fan. As you can see, that is a baseball. And you have the bit up there and then bats. So the light casing is a baseball. One of the chains is a baseball and the other chains are mitt. So you would think oh because you would think this is for the light, but no. <sighs> this is for the light. Oh yeah, more sports. Oh, wrong switch. I found the football. American football, not a soccer football. What's in this box? What is that in this, in that box? How did I forget about this? I'm calling her Penny Ruth. And she might appear in a future video. There's like a three part YouTube video idea which I finished writing. I just need to do it. Make sure I have the few props I want. And then after that is a big video idea. And after that, even bigger idea that she might be small part of big idea. As of recording, both this three-part idea and this idea are finished. I'm still in the process of getting this very big idea that she might be a small part of finished. 